Welcome to our special program previewing the Longines International Jockeys Championship for 2021. I'm Andrew Lejeune. Now we've got a stellar lineup uh, featuring established greats and riders in red hot recent form as well, contesting the Longines IJC at Happy Valley on Wednesday night, the 8th of December. The Longines IJC again lives up to its reputation as the premier contest of its kind on the global calendar. It's the most prestigious jockeys uh, challenge in the world and the most lucrative as well. Four races are worth a combined 6.2 million Hong Kong dollars in prize money and there's a total prize fund of $800,000 as well to be split between the three most successful riders with uh, $500,000 going to the, uh, the leading rider and then 200 and 100,000 going to second and third respectively. Now, to ensure the attractive fields for the IJC, prize money for the four races will also benefit from a 20% increase. So we've got two races in class four at $1,248,000 and two races in class three at $1,184,000. Now, we'll be meeting some of the jockeys who'll be riding at uh, this year's challenge uh, very shortly. But first, we'd look back on some of the IJC memorable moments and some of the great jockeys who graced the turf here at Happy Valley. Three-time winner, Frankie Dottori. He's the only jockey to have won this uh, three times um, as well in 99, 2001, and 2011. No flying dismounts this time, though, uh, for the Talon, who enjoyed great success here in Hong Kong around the same sort of era as well. He had uh, two Vars successes, three wins in the Cup, and one win in the mile as well. Frankie Dottori, one of the greats, Hugh Bowman, Sylvester de Sosa, and Ryan Moore, who also uh, won the IJC. Hugh Bowman had won the Derby that year on Werther. Sylvester de Sosa back in February to continue his run here in Hong Kong. And Ryan Moore, well, he returns once more. He actually shared the prize, Ryan Moore, in 2009 with Johnny Murta and Christophe Lemaire. Lemaire still riding very successfully, of, of course, as is Ryan Moore, but Johnny Murta has now hung up his boots and he's enjoying a very successful career as a trainer, but he almost stole the prize literally in 2009, but had to settle for a share with Ryan Moore and Le Maire as well. So Ryan, although he shared that one, still in theory looking for his uh, third win uh, in the title race. Karis Teeton, now he's not back uh, this year. Karis, unfortunately, has been struggling with an injury of late, but the Mauritian magician carried off the IJC title in 2019. Karis is back on Sunday, though, for the big ones, HKR and the four group ones there. And of course, we finish off with Zach Perna, another two-time winner of the IJC. He's back to defend his crown um, as well. So he'd be joining Frankie Dottori if he were able to win once more. And Zach heading to International Day on Sunday with four good rides, riding all local horses as well as he tries to add to his already impressive haul of HKIR win. So there's some of the jockeys that we'll be meeting throughout the course of the day as well. Now last year there were barely any racing fans at the track to, uh, to cheer the horses on, but this year as the local pandemic situation stabilizes, we're expecting a vibrant and passionate crowd to returning to the Happy Valley race course. Now while the IJC is the first of the major events of the week-long celebration of international racing, it's followed by the Longines Hong Kong international races on Sunday uh, the 12th of December, of course, at Sha Tin Racecourse. Now, with the COVID-19 pandemic creating uncertainty around many international uh, racing events this year, the strength of the international presence in this year's lineup confirms that the Sha Tin showpiece retains its preeminent position at the top of the agenda for international horsemen. The Longines HKIR is the sport's global year-end spectacular and featuring the four Group 1s, $30 million for the Longines Hong Kong Cup. That's over 2,000 meters. $26 million for the Longines Hong Kong Mile, of course, over the 16 there. The Sprint is worth $24 million over the 1,200 meters, and the Longines Hong Kong Vars at $20 million, which means the Cup, the Mile, and the Sprint are the world's richest Group 1 races uh, run on turf over their respective distances. Of course, we've had, just like many great jockeys, many great horses grace the turf at Sha Tin as well. And there'll be a whole host of horses looking to add uh, their name to the roll of honor. Uh, the memorable horses that have won here at uh, Sha Tin in the past, we've got Jim and Tonic at the turn of the century, fantastic, like Foulbrad for Luca Kamani, silent witness for the home team, a double in the sprint in 2003 and 2004, and Ouija board, of course, successful in 2005. Good Barber ruled the mile ranks in Hong Kong from seven through to nine. Vision Day Tower, winner for France, California Mary, 
double in the cup in 11 and 12. Snow Fairy, another filly, a three-year-old winning the cup in 2010 under Ryan Moore. And Lord Cannonlower, another great of the international races, winning for Japan in 12 and 13. The immortal and able friend in 2014, another win for France in Flincher. Morris was brilliant, winning the mile and the cup in back-to-back -back 15 and 16. And another win for uh, Japan was Aishin Hakari in 2015. They bring a very strong challenge again, the Japanese, to this year's event. Now, the HKR, with HKR firmly established as one of the world's uh, principal racing events, this year we'll welcome an extraordinary lineup, again, from Japan, Great Britain, um, Ireland and France as well, which includes 20, 20 individual Group 1 winners. To have runs of this caliber in any year would be notable, but once again, it's truly remarkable given the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. Back to Happy Valley, though, on Wednesday night, and the star-studded lineup for this year's Longines International Jockey Championship. A great up lineup this year, including Lexi Bedell, third in the IJC last season, firmly established as one of the region's leading riders now, including success in the Chairman's Sprint Prize last season with Wellington. Mikel Barcelona for France, leading jockey in the region in 2021. The season capped with a great success on Seal Away on British Champions Day. Holly Doyle back for the IJC as well. She enjoyed success last year and also finished third. So she's had a great season once more teaming up with Trushan. Back-to-back victories in the Long Distance Cup for him. Lyle Hewitson, a three-time champion of South Africa, enjoyed success in Japan. He's back here to ride in Hong Kong. Vincent Ho for Hong Kong, of course. Five Group 1s last season, always associated with a mighty Golden 60s, back to defend his mile crown on the weekend at Sha Tin. Yuga Kawada, the 2019 World All-Star Jockeys Champion, fresh from success in America, where he scored on Love's Only You at the Breeders' Cup meeting. She is running a final race at Sha Tin on Sunday. Damien Lane, with an impressive 23 Group 1s to his name, had a fantastic uh, season, has teamed up in Japan and with Japan. He'll be riding Salios in the mile come Sunday at Shaft Inn. Tom Marquand, who's third in the British Ch Championship uh, this season, had a great year again. He's back for his second try at the IJC, and he's sticking around for the weekend. He rides Dubai Honor in the cup. James McDonald, a five-time Sydney champion jockey, representing New Zealand, had a record-breaking spring capped off with victory in the Melbourne Cup. And of course, Ryan Moore, who regained his crown as the Longines world best rider this year. He's a two-time winner of the IJC, and of course, will be sticking around to ride on the weekend as well. Joe Moreira, four-time Hong Kong champion jockey, including last year's derby with Sky Darcy, who also lines up on Sunday. Joe won the IJC back in 2012. And finally, Zach Burton, last year's IJC champion. He also won it in 2017, so looking for a record equaling third victory. He's back on the weekend riding four horses for Hong Kong on Sunday. Now we'll be meeting a number of those uh, jockeys very shortly, but today we're also delighted to have the CEO of the Hong Kong Jockey Club in Mr. Winfred Engelbert Breskis to share with us on the vision of organizing the world-class global racing events. So if, uh, Winfred, if you'd like to uh, join me on the stage, thank you. Good to see you. <laughs> you as well. It's a busy week, of course, but you must be delighted uh, to be in the position we are once more, to be welcoming back the, the colour of a horse we have, uh, the trainer and jockeys as well. Not for just the IJC, but the weekend also. I think uh, it is probably the best we could hope for. And if you see the circumstances under which we hold this, first of all, I think we have to thank the government for the trust, because uh, giving us this permission to hold this event in a significant COVID situation, but we have a proven record. We proved it last year. <clears throat> we are standing for excellence. And therefore, uh, we again further and we created this uh, closed loop system. And um, we have always guiding principles. And the guiding principle is none of our activities can create a public health risk. None of our activities can create any risk for our employees, jockeys, trainers, and customers. So that has led to this uh, arrangement. But. Uh, we were able to attract some of the best horses and jockeys around the world. 
because we have trust, and that is uh, the basis for our success. You mentioned some of the horses there, with all the racing fans around the world tuning in this week to catch up with some of their favorites. They're having their final, some of them are having their final starts here this weekend as well. Who are some of the horses that have uh, caught your eye so far? So I went to the race cart, uh, but I went this morning to track work. And being a little bit patriotic, I think Golden 60 looks uh, in magnificent shape. Mm. But if you look at the opposition we have in all races, and if you start with the sprint, for example, I think probably one of the most exciting horses in Japan, the three-year-old sprinter, Pixie Knight, yeah. uh, who is by Maurice, a uh, former winner of uh, Group 1 races here in Hong Kong. If you look at Dan and Smash, I think, uh, who tries to repeat his success. If you look at uh, uh, Glory Vaz, I think uh, it's uh, fantastic. If you look at the, <laughs> the mile, in a way, we have uh, with uh, Dan and King Lee, a very, very good horse, who finished second in the Japanese Derby and we know Yoshida Kinane. And uh, we have some fantastic horses coming from uh, Great Britain, a pile driver, mm. who looks in magnificent shape. So I think we will look for really a spectacle of exceptional horses. Hong Kong's obviously regarded as one of the leading racing jurisdictions in the world. So how important is this week to the club itself? I think the Long Jeans Hong Kong International Races is one of our key brands. And it is a huge competition for top horses. And in competition, you always have to improve. So therefore, you have to be out there. You have to attract the best horses around the world. And this is the global focus. And this is one of the very, very few sporting events Hong Kong has where the whole world is watching. And for our brand, for staging this event, showing our partnership with Long Jeans and showing that our sport is really world class. That's in the end which uh, we live for. I'm assuming planning for this year almost started immediately after um, last year had finished. So how satisfying is it for you to see it all come together again? Because we're still within um, certain restrictions with, with COVID-19. That must be very gratifying. I can only say we have a fantastic team. Because this is our spirit of play to win. Uh, we took probably two weeks rest uh, <laughs> after the last in, uh, international race meeting, and then we uh, planned for the FWD. But we knew, especially when you look at June, July, that the challenges to keep this race meeting going is even bigger than last year. And the effort we have taken, we have not really one step, every step we went through, and to pull this off and to get the permission of the government to hold such a sporting event, and seeing the huge attraction from international runners, because attracting 19 horses from four different countries in COVID, I think is an amazing achievement of our team. Last year, we were um, tied with the fact that there weren't mm -hmm. many racing fans on course, unfortunately. Is that going to be different? Because fans do make such a difference, don't they, on the track on the big days? I think last year, it was uh, a very, call it sterile environment. So I, I could practically greet every customer <laughs> uh, myself. It was between 150 to 250 attendants. But this year, I think uh, I'm happy to report, shot in, uh, we are expecting around 17,000 to 18,000 people. And uh, Happy Valley is already completely sold out with 7,600. And our racing fans in Hong Kong, they are our greatest asset. Uh, and that they be able to see this life, see the best horses around the world, and creating definitely a fantastic atmosphere is uh, really a credit to the team and gratifying. Yeah, well, enjoy this week. I know it's a very busy week for everyone, but hopefully you get to enjoy it um, as well. Thank you for your time today, and we're going to be looking out for those horses on the weekend that you've spied at track work for us. Definitely. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Winfred. The exciting lineup of the IJC this year includes three previous winners of the world's most coveted jockey challenge crown, including Zach Purton and reigning Hong Kong champion jockey in Joe Marrero, both multiple champions on the world's most intensely competitive circuit. Reigning long jean IJC champion Zach Purton and Ryan Moore will both chase a record equaling third IJC title. I'm pleased to say now we're joined by Australian jockey in Damien Lane, who's joining the contest for the first time. The 27-year-old rider has firmly established himself as one of the world's rising talents, winning three out of the four legs of Australia's racing's Grand Slam by securing the Golden Slipper aboard Sir Kamichi, Caulfield Cup aboard Murder Glass and WS Cockplate with Luce Gracieux in 2019. Damien, 
thank you uh, for joining us. Um, how are you settling in, first and foremost? Thanks for having me, Andrew. Uh, settling in really well. I uh, got in last night and uh, was able to get out to track work for a little look this morning and uh, back in the set of the hotel room now. Fantastic. Now, I know you, you're sticking around for Sunday. We'll talk about your Sunday rides in a moment. But firstly, the IJC on Wednesday night, your first. And it seems like you've drawn, drawn quite a good book of rides. I don't know how deeply you've delved into the form um, as yet, but more than one person's told me that um, you might be the winner this year. Well, I'm hoping so. Obviously, <laughs> just uh, very privileged to be a part of the IJC. My, as you said, my uh, first time competing uh, in this series. But and as you touched on, also I've drawn some really nice rides, so really looking forward to getting getting into the action. One of the really good ones is um, California Sibley in the last leg. If it comes down to the last leg, I don't know if you remember this horse uh, when he was racing in Australia, but he's made a really quick impact um, here in Hong Kong, and um, yeah, could give you a real good chance in that final leg. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he's obvious. He's drawn a touch tricky, uh, but. He's obviously performed very well since he's been in, here in Hong Kong, and he looks like he's improving all the time, which is which is a big plus. Now, on the weekend, um, you ride Salios. Now, this is a horse you've actually ridden in Japan as well. You're runner-up in the Guineas in the Derby. Was that right behind Contrail? So you must have high hopes for him into the weekend. And the trainer knows what it takes to win one of these HKR races as well, um, Nuriyuki Hori, um, who's been here with uh, Maurice and Satona Crown in the past. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Hori Sensei is one of the best at his craft and I've partnered Sally on a number of occasions now. I won his first start at Tokyo and then, uh, as you said, placed behind Contrail twice in Group 1. So really looking forward to uh, teaming back up with him and uh, he looked in fantastic order this morning. So, um, yeah, I think he'll compete really well. You've obviously got to respect the local champion here in Golden 60, but you come here with um, thinking you've got a life chance? Yeah, I do. Uh, I really believe he does. Uh, obviously, Golden Six is going to be awfully hard to beat, but uh, I think if anyone can do it, it'll be it'll be a Japanese runner, and uh, he's a, he's as good uh, as as any of them in, in in the race. Now, you've obviously enjoyed success with the Japanese horses when they've travelled to Australia. You've had um, great stints in Japan as well, winning Grade One contests there. I know it's a very hard thing to um, to condense into a sentence, but. How do they keep doing it? Because they've traveled, they've just been to, to America as well, to the Breeders' Cup meeting. They come to Australia, they go to Europe as well, they come here to Hong Kong. What's the secret, I think, for the Japanese success? Uh, just the quality of horse and I think the understanding that they have of their horses and, and um, that understanding of how to travel them. They obviously travel really well and um, their horse is uh, obviously as good a cattle as there is anywhere in the world. Well, best of luck on the weekend, uh, Damien. On Wednesday night as well at the IJC Challenge, uh, I'm sure you'll go very well. Thank you. Well, our thanks to Damien Lane. I'm pleased to say we'll be talking to James McDonald very shortly, who joins the star-studded list uh, once more. He's performed at an exceptional level again this year. Of course, McDonald hailing from New Zealand originally. Recently broke the record for the most wins Melbourne Cup week. And it now stands at 10, breaking the previous record, which was nine, which was held by Brett Preble. won the Melbourne Cup that week um, as well. So, very pleased to say, James McDonald joins us from his hotel room as well. And James, thanks for your time. Um, travel okay? Settling in all right? Yeah, absolutely, Andrew. No, all's good and um, got here yesterday, so... Got our last, oh, got a COVID test this morning and um, now locked away. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you on Wednesday night. And it's just Wednesday. You're not sticking around for the weekend. Um, off the back of such a big year they've had with all these big wins, um, with Melbourne Cups, um, Everests and those sort of things, how much does an event like uh, riding at the IJC mean to you? Because it hasn't been a straightforward task just to, just to come here to ride for this night. No, it hasn't. But it's um it's a it's obviously a meeting that we would love competing at. Um, had a little bit of luck in the past over the over the years, and um, yeah, I definitely wasn't going to miss it. That's for sure, unless um, things dramatically changed in the in the last two weeks. But it didn't, thankfully. So um, you yeah, know, nah, we're here, and um, unfortunately, can't stay till till uh, for Sunday. So that was a bit unfortunate. But um, hopefully, um, we'll be back again anyway. All right, well, maybe you can make it count on Wednesday night. You've had a chance to look at um, your rides. I thought it was quite an even um, four horses that you've drawn. Wild West Wind, Sacred Ibis, Invincible Missile, and, and Jensen as well. You could give them all some sort of chance, couldn't you? Yeah, they, they, they look little chances for sure. Obviously, um, we'll need a little bit of luck with the barriers, but, um, yeah, they, they look an even bunch of rides, so hopefully we get a little bit of luck in the run and um, they'll be figuring in the finish somewhere 
thereabouts anyway, so looking forward to it. Is it easy to pick up the thread just to arrive at a, a race course like Happy Valley and just jump on? I think you've got a couple of earlier rides, haven't you, just to find your feet? Yeah, no, we've got eight rides over the night, so we've got um, plenty, plenty of rides, so we're look, really looking forward to it. Obviously, Happy Valley, we've been there before. Um, not, well, wasn't there last year, but um, yeah, it um, obviously can, got fond memories of it, had a little bit of luck, and um, yeah, looking forward to getting back around there. Well, speaking of fond memories, this year's just been a dream, hasn't it? Um, Melbourne Cup, Cup week, just extraordinary, very elegant, the icing on the cake. How were the emotions that week? Yeah, no, it was pretty cool. Obviously, we had a fantastic week. Uh, all, all the horses ran particularly well. Um, they all had their chances and um, performed up to expectations. But yeah, to win a Melbourne Cup was obviously the icing on the cake after a fantastic week. And um, yeah, now hopefully we can bring that form to on Wednesday night in the IJC. Just on those horses, well, I heard Chris Waller talking, maybe international campaigns for, um, for Very Elegant and a few other, other stars. That'd be exciting next season. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, there's a bit of water to go under the bridge, but um, they're penciled in to head over there. Uh, very elegant nature strip home affairs, who, who's a very exciting three-year-old as well. So, um, yeah, there's plenty to look forward to, and um, hopefully, hopefully, we get a chance to travel those great old horses and um, compete against the best overseas. And you know, if you're on the road with those sort of horses as well, there's always a couple of spare stables here. You can stop in on your way back to Australia if you want, December next year. Yeah, hopefully anyway, it'll be, it'll be very good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, um, great to have you on today, James. Looking forward to, uh, to seeing you in action on Wednesday night as well. Very best of luck to you. Thank you very much. All right. So thanks to James McDonald. We can move on now and welcome in the British uh, duo of Tom Markland and Holly Doyle, who joined the contest for the second time as the two worlds racing most rapidly ascending stars, aged 23 and 25 respectively. The couple sealed third and fifth place in the 2021 British Flat Racing Championship. Both made their Longines IJC debuts last year. And in 2020, Doyle became the first female rider to win a leg of the IJC, allowing her to finish joint third with Alexi Bedell in the contest. I'm very pleased to say they join us now on the line as well. Tom and Holly, I know it's been a really busy 24 hours for you, so we'll try and keep it short. Thank you for your time um, today. But despite all that, Holly, I'm sure you're really excited to be back. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the IJC tomorrow. Um, obviously, had a bit of luck last year, so um, I'm hoping that uh, one of my rides can come in or, um, you know, have, have, uh, have a bit of luck, really. It's, um, it's one of those, isn't it, where you know, you need things to be on your side. Absolutely. But Tom, one of the bonuses about all this is that you can actually quarantine together, if nothing else. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure whether it's a, <laughs> a, 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 a tactical uh, sort of plus or a minus, but um, no, look, I, it, like in all seriousness, it's absolutely fantastic to be back because, um, you know, last year, obviously the Hong Kong Jockey Club moved heaven and earth for us to be here and, um Sadly, with the COVID situation, they've had to do again. But um, yeah, look, we're, we're blessed to even have, have got here once again and uh, yeah, really looking forward to tomorrow night. All right, we'll, we'll talk about your rides in a second. But Holly, just on last year, I mean, that was just a, a whirlwind for you, I suppose, winning that, that final leg. And straight away, you're on the podium then in, in third place. What are, your, what are your memories of your first time here? Yeah, it was awesome. I, I got a real buzz, although there were no um, crowds last year. I got a, I got a right buzz off it. Um, I love riding the track and um, I, got, I got a real you know, I, I really enjoyed it and um, the dynamics of everything, really. So um, it's great to be back. Well, there will be a crowd this time, so there should be a real atmosphere on course. And um, Tom, you've got some really good rides coming up on, on Wednesday night. I thought you're riding the first awesome treasure. looks like a real life chance. But how difficult is it for you, the fact that you haven't ridden here for a year, um, you just arrived straight to the track. This is a thousand meters as well. You're going to be on speed. It, 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 is it, am I making more of it? You just get on and get on with it, or is, there are some difficulties involved in all of that? Um, yeah, I mean, look, it's certainly it's certainly a factor, but um, you know, fortunately, you sort of um, the more you, the more you start travelling, the better you get at um, sort of arriving where you arrive and just jumping straight into it. So, um, look, it, it, it certainly wouldn't have, it wouldn't be something that would enter my mind as a problem. But um, yeah, really, really looking forward to sort of riding him. He looks like the main one for tomorrow night. They drew well as well, so. Um, obviously around Happy Valley is pretty key. So, uh, yeah, really, um, really hoping that my sort of IJC can get off to a good start this year. 
Yeah, and you get a win in the first leg, pick up a couple more points along the way. It could be in, in line as well. And Ollie, you won the final leg last year, and it might well be that um, that's your best ride as well on Wednesday night, winning methods in the last. I know you probably haven't del delved into the form too deeply, but he looks like a real strong chance. Yeah, it looks that way. He's dropping down in class. He's, he's drawn well. Um, he's my only ride that is drawn well. But, um, and he, he's been running ever so consistently, and he, I think he was third last time out staying on. So he probably would be my, my best, best run of the night. Looking ahead then, I know you're not sticking around, Holly. It's just uh, straight back to the UK for you. But Tom, you're going to be here on the weekend as well for the big international races in Dubai Honour. Um, he'd have to have a big chance. It's a very strong race, the Cup, this year, but you'd be excited about him. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to um, hanging around for him on Sunday. He's, um, I mean, he's been nothing short of a revelation really this season. The pro progression he's shown, and um, obviously he finished off his sort of UK season, finished the second in the Champion Stakes. So that was a super run, and um, yeah, I mean, hopefully his progression hasn't stopped, and he can come into Sunday and um go a step on from that again so as you said it's a really tough race and um you know no no group ones are, are easy in hong kong and um yeah just fingers crossed he's taken the travel well arrived in the best order that he can and he can uh, put in a good performance holly you're coming off a great season again two of your stars stood up and delivered true shannon i know glenn shield didn't actually win this year but he put up some mighty performances i was going to ask you any chance we can get them out next year but um, I don't think they'd necessarily enjoy the quicker conditions here at Sha Tin, would they? No, unfortunately, um, both of those horses are pretty ground dependent, so I don't think we'll be seeing them around Sha Tin next year. All right, we'll see if we can find you an, another mount uh, somewhere else. But um, just wrapping up, I suppose, guys, it's been a very busy um, year for you all round. How do you cope then as a, I know you're not the only hardworking couple in racing, but up early in the morning, riding out for different trainers, going to different race courses, maybe day meetings, evening meetings, north and south of England. Um, it's six, seven days a week, 12 months of the year. That's got to take its toll, hasn't it, Holly? Um, I suppose it does, but it's something that I don't, you know, I don't know much different and it's something that we're kind of used to now. Um, obviously, you don't get many days off, but um, it, it, for, for me, it's worth it completely. But... Um, it, it can take its toll, but it, it's going well at the moment, so we're making the most of it. <laughs> yeah. What if I told you, Tom, there was a place that existed that only raced twice a week, maximum was like a half-hour drive to an evening meeting, let's say on a Wednesday night, the other race courses on your doorstep, you could walk there. All the trainers are in the same spot. You could walk there from your front door to track work. And when you weren't riding track work or racing, you had the rest of the week to yourself as well for you know mind, body and soul sort of stuff. Hiking, cycling, I know you love cycling, Holly, there'd be plenty of time for that. Is that something you could be interested in, do you think? Yeah, I, I, I think definitely at some point um, we'd love to give it a go. Yeah. And I can even, Tom, just to sweeten the deal, I can give you the summer off. How about that? <laughs> Four weeks holiday. You only ride from yeah. September to July. The holiday sounds good. Um, no, look, in, in all seriousness, I, like it's incredible the structure that that you guys have over here. And um, you know, obviously, we're we're pretty busy in England, and that's the way it is. But um, yeah, it's, it's certainly uh, it's certainly something to sort of open your eyes to, and um, you know, something I'm sure one day we'll look forward to to being able to do. Yeah, well, you don't even make a decision. I've, I know a guy. That's all I'm saying. So <laughs> just think about it. All right, well, best of luck uh, on Wednesday night. Um, I'm sure you do brilliantly. And uh, Holly, safe travels back to the UK. And uh, Tom, good luck on Sunday as well with uh, Dubai. And I'm sure it's going to be great. Thanks Thank very you. much, Jim. Thanks very much. All right, uh, Tom and Holly, of course, at the IJC then on uh, Wednesday night. Great to have them, James McDonald, Damien Lane as well. They'll be joined by the international riders, of course, by Yuga Kawada, uh, by Lyle Hewitson, uh, Mikhail Barcelona, and the reigning Longines World Best Jockey. And that, of course, is Ryan Moore. We will continue to look at the exciting lineup for the Longjean IJC, including our four Hong Kong based uh, jockeys. We can welcome Zach Purton, Alexi Bedell, uh, Joe Moreira, and Vincent Ho as well. Gentlemen, welcome. I know we're looking forward to a big Wednesday night and Sunday as well. I've got lots of questions for you, but uh, Zach, we'll start off with you as defending champion here for the IJC uh, meeting. You've won it twice now, of course, looking for a record equaling third uh, victory and then looking forward to a big Sunday um, as well. And just to cap it all as well, you had a quite a good uh, weekend with a double at Sha Tin, which has meant you broke a 
small records on the weekend as well. I don't have the exact number in front of me, but in terms of prize money you've now earned, it's, let's just say, 1.5 billion, give, give or take, something like that. Yeah, it's not a bad record to have. <laughs> I knew it was coming up, so it gave me some motivation, and now that I've got it, you know, every meeting's going to be a new record, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, helped in some part by champions you've ridden, Exultant and Beauty Generation. They're the two leading money earners all time in Hong Kong, so that's certainly helped, hasn't it? Yeah, of course it has so far. You know, yeah. we've got Golden 60 coming up pretty quickly <laughs> behind us, but uh, so far, yeah, they, uh, they hold the records and being associated with them it definitely helped. Yeah, well, I think his next win, Vincent, Golden 60, you'll leapfrog Exultant. You'll go into second place on the, uh, the money earners list. Uh, I don't keep track of the records, <laughs> to be honest, but yeah. Good record to have. And Joe, you're not far behind Zach and Douglas as well. I don't know if you've got the, the, uh, the calculator out, keeping tabs as well. I honestly haven't been counting that, to be honest. Uh, Zach has done an amazing job to, to reach that mark, and he certainly deserves that. All right, well, let's talk about Wednesday night first. Uh, Zach, defending uh, champion. You've got Circuit 7, Glorious Lover, Amazing One Plus, and Shining Gem. What's your thoughts on your, your book there? Yeah, I think they're okay. I don't have a standout or a horse I can rely on there, but I've got a couple of gates that may be able to help them. And like uh, in any race here in Hong Kong, it will come down to the tempo of the race and the luck that we have. Yeah. I think from memory, Alexi, Zach was a bit down on his rides last year as well. And then before you know it, he's on the stage holding the trophy. Yeah, correct. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say, but uh, <laughs> to, to, to me, it looks very um, competitive and very exciting. Yeah. I think that the, the, new, the new format, Zach, with the way the rides are distributed, everyone really gets an even chance. It does seem like quite an even split across. Yeah, the certainly. They, they definitely did the right thing by changing the way that they approached it. And um, as we uh, can see, uh, it's very open, it's very even, it gives a lot of riders a chance and um, it's the way it should be, so it's nice. Talking about Sunday then, I think you've won each international race at least twice, haven't you? You've got a full book um, coming into Sunday. All local horses um, as well, Butterfield, Lucky Patch, um, Glorious Dragon and, and Waikuku. Again, they're in there with a shout in some shape or form, aren't they? Yeah, I think the sprint's probably the more, most even race out of all of them. Um, the mile, Waikuku can run well, but you know, Golden 60 is going to be pretty hard to beat there. And the Cup, the internationals look like they're pretty strong. And, and, and once again, in the Vars as well. So, um, you know, let's hope that uh, I can be a player in one of those races or, or all of them and see how we go. On the Golden 60 side of things, I mean, you've been in the, the other side of the fence, if you like. When you had Beauty Generation, you were the, the hunted. Now you're the, the hunter. How do you approach a race like that in, in trying to, um, you know, beat a champion? Yeah, it's hard. Obviously, Golden 60, it yeah, it's very hard to beat him. You know, you, you go slow, he out sprints you, you go fast, you set it up for him. So there's not really a chink in his armour. Um, but it's a great position to be in when you're riding those horses. You go to the races with a lot of confidence and you really look forward to the day and, and you just hope that everything goes smoothly and um, I'm sure it will for Vincent. All right, well, we'll speak to Vincent uh, in a moment. But uh, next up, let's uh, talk to... Joe Moreira also won this uh, title, the IJC title, back in 2012 and has broken record after record here in Hong Kong. He's the current champion a jockey, of course, winning the derby last year on Sky Darcy, who we'll see on the weekend uh, going round, along with Hot King Prawn, although Hot King Prawn will have a different uh, jockey, um, as will uh, Waikuku as well, who's provided you with uh, two Group one uh, wins, but uh, Joe, going back to that 2012 uh, win, the IJC win, that's before you actually came to Hong Kong. So was that sort of one of the reasons, you know, you thought this could be the, the, the place for me? That was a door opening for myself, for my career as a jockey, no doubts about it. And that great me, gave me a great feel of how it works in Hong Kong. Um, and also gave me a chance to show if I had or not talent to be here. It didn't take much long until I got invited and uh, Thanks God, I accept it and certainly don't regret. Now you're riding Happy Valley week after week. Does that give you an advantage, you think, over the, the, the visiting riders? They're all top class riders, obviously, but uh, home ground advantage, is there anything in that? Uh, that is always an advantage if you ride every week uh, in Happy Valley, because it, it is a very tricky track, we all know it. But as you mentioned yourself, the riders coming over here, they talent riders and uh, you as a local jockey, still you have to come up with your A game, otherwise you're surely going to get beaten. They're good riders. Yeah. Um, on your rides uh, for Wednesday night, Telecom Rocket, Red Brick Fighter, uh, Red Majesty and Classic Posh, they're two good rides. Yeah, not too bad. In particular, the gates they've got, uh, all of them has got decent gates and uh, I should have every chance from there. I, I mean, I should be giving every ride of mine 
every chance to be competitive. So uh, hopefully some of them um, go there and do what we expect, is, which is to win the race. Um, and then when it comes to the last few legs of the Jockeys Challenge, uh, hopefully we can keep on grab, uh, gripping points, which is going to be essential if you want to be competitive. Yeah, we'll it's, no doubt, it's no doubt a very unique challenge for all of us jockeys. And, and I just love the atmosphere created around this week, you know, because it is exciting. Speaking of points, Alexi, are you in the weighing room writing down your numbers or even beforehand thinking, well, I can get four points on that one, six points here. I'm in with a chance if I run third in the, the last leg or you just no, it no, no, I like to keep the suspense. <laughs> <laughs> just go for the last leg and uh, whatever happens. And just on one of Joe's rides, that Reg Majesty, you've won on him a couple of times. He's got a great record. Here. Yeah, I have. He likes to be ridden quiet, Joe. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, drop just him out of the back. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, Joe, just quickly on your weekend rides as well. Glory Vars. Back again, you'd be excited about that. Courier Wonder, Sky Darcy, and uh, Ishii Iguazu for Japan. So two Japanese rides. Yeah, uh, they, no doubt so. Strong, strong rides. I mean, they, they're going to be very competitive, in particular, Gory Vaz, who has won uh, the Vaz two years ago in 2019. Apparently, he's in great form, as his last run was outstanding. And I, I know it's, 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 it's a strong race, but he has proven before that he's capable. So I'm very hopeful about him. All right. Good luck. Four book rides uh, there. We can speak to uh, Alexi Badel now. And Alexi, of course, firmly established of one of Hong Kong's uh, leading riders uh, now and finished third in the IJC, joint third uh, last year as well. We're looking to go a couple of places uh, better. Of course, Alexi now associated with Group 1 winning sprinter in Wellington, who was just superb in last year's uh, Chairman Sprint Prize. And uh, Alexi, he's one of two rides for you on the weekend, uh, Wellington. You go into Sunday with high hopes, wouldn't you? Yes, definitely. Uh, we all know that um, the previous race was difficult for him because he came back from a long uh, break, uh, seven months of the track, and also his preparation was a little bit interrupted, so it wasn't ideal. And uh, I expect him to come back to his, uh, his best level on, on Sunday. So no doubt he's uh, one of the top sprinters at the moment in Hong Kong, so I believe in our chances. He looks like a horse that just oozes quality in class. Does he feel like that when you're riding him as well? Yes, he's a very talented horse. Uh, naturally, he's got the abilities and he's got the, the turn of foot you, you are looking for uh, at the top of the, of the group one horses. He, he's got that explosive turn of foot that is to just make the difference. And you've got Torby and Diamond as well, your other rides on International Day. The form of the Sasai Ladies Purse is, is working out well. Yes, he's in fantastic form. Uh, he's been very consistent this year. Um, he maintained his form, so I, I believe he's going to run a good race. We know that he, he can stay the distance as well. It's going to be all about the draw and, uh, and if he's got the ability at this, at this level of competition. But I believe he's in good form, so he should run a good race. All right, just on your, uh, your IJC mounts, fabulous eight, good chance. Uh, Jan Zian rocks on his day or night, some sort of chance. Nothing new is, or nothing new to you because you rode him. Uh, yes. last time as well, and uh, Resolute, good ride in the last leg. Yes, correct. Uh, there they seems to be, uh, most of them looks competitive. Uh, well, as you know, everything can happen in Happy Valley, so uh, nothing is impossible. Uh, nothing new seems to be a solid chance, even if he step up to class three, he, it looks like he, he's improved a little bit. Uh, I would say fantastic hate uh, the trip in Happy Valley, 1,000 meters, class four, fantastic for him. Mm. Uh, the draw is pretty okay, even if it's seven, I think it's, it's okay. Uh, Zhenjiang rocks. I have a bad gait, but I, I believe he must be ridden a little bit more patient than, uh, than he used to be uh, with me. And uh, Resolute, like, well, he, I don't know his, his record. He has never raced in Happy Valley 1200, but uh, his form is pretty cool, so yeah. uh, he, must, he must be able to grab some points. Okay, well, I'll keep score for you and I'll shout down if you're going <laughs> okay, Matt. Let you know where you need to finish in that, in that yes. final leg. Uh... I'll look at you in the paddock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, final uh, jockey we can speak to, of course, is Vincent uh, Ho. Vincent, now associated now and forever with Golden um, 60, but has endured some, some great moments at the IJC meeting as well. Golden 60, uh, Vincent, I know you hate talking about these uh, records, but uh, he's now looking for his 16th straight so when he's won 18 of his 19 races already, and he's the defending champion coming back uh, for the mile. How is the champ heading into Sunday? Yeah, it felt really good. Uh, Gallop him this morning, uh, even better than 
the previous race uh, better than the prep we had before and uh, felt great, yeah. Mm. What does he do this week? Not much, he's just stretching uh, his legs. Oh, uh, we had a good gallop to, okay. this morning. Uh, need to give him a good blow still. Um, but yeah, he, we're really happy with how he is now. I uh, feel very well. The barrier draw will be on, on Thursday. Worry might be the wrong word, but do you, are you concerned about where you draw in a race no, like that? You just... it's out of my control, so yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I don't mind. Any draw is good for me. Yeah. Uh, where do you want to see him drawn? One down on the inside? <laughs> R- Riverside. <laughs> <laughs> Put him there. <laughs> Gives us a bit of a chance. Uh, uh, it's a really good lineup, though. The Mar with these these Japanese yeah horses. it's amazing um, and you you, you ride um, as well um, stay foolish um, obviously I'm sure you'd like to have ridden loves only you who you won on the QE2. oh yeah I would love to but, um, yeah. as well but you're still riding for the the, the, the same stable um, do you know much about him uh, yeah uh, stable told me he has a good chance for sure and he should be better than what the result shows uh, and he should shoot Hong Kong track. Uh, and thanks, of course, thanks to Mr. Yagi, you give me a, another chance again. Mm. Um, quickly then on your, your Happy Valley rides, though, Fairbow, more than enough, uh, the anomaly, and um, Wood on Fire in the last leg again. You know, good chance. Yeah, I think uh, the last two, I think they, you know, they, they had some form and, you know, they won before. So I relied on them for sure. And, uh, yeah, I think it's not, nothing stands out, but, at least some of them got form in there. All right. If Alexi's not, is anyone in the in the weighing room counting score on Wednesday night? Someone keeping updated saying it did it. No. No. Uh, I, I, I'll just do race by race. race, by race. <laughs> All right. Um, without naming particular horses or races, how many of the Group Ones will Hong Kong win on Sunday? Do you think at least one? You're hoping, I'm sure. Oh, at least one. I hope, and uh, I see if. Alexi or Sack can win the sprint, right. but I'll, I think uh, if Shonga is on a on his day, he can be up there with with those guys, you know. And uh, and uh, yeah, because he, he he have proven he, he has always been competitive up there. All right, the Golden Six is obviously the main one. Alexi of the in, uh, the European runners, we've got a runner from France, Alan de Roy de Pre is going to be his final runner here. And, uh, Hong Kong as well, um, Ireland and the UK. How many races can they win? Do I have to mention horses? Just how many races? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a good record in the Vars or the Cup. Dubai Honor in the Cup. Pile Driver in the Vars. Oh uh, no, I don't, I, I don't know. I haven't paid attention. Okay. I'm only well, riding the Cup. The Vars have got nothing, <laughs> so uh, I'm a spectator. For Japan, Joe. They're always very strong here. How many do you think they can carry off? Ah. Uh. Maybe two, and Maybe hopefully you're riding, but you're riding one of them. Yeah, you're riding two of them. Um, yeah. And uh, you're riding all local horses uh, this time around. Hard for a local clean sweep, but you're in there fighting. Yeah, of course. Uh, we'll give it our best. We have the home track advantage. We know where we're going. Our horses yeah. are stable here. They're comfortable. So, no, they all look like they're very fit. They're all ready to go. They've been prepared well for, for this meeting. All right. Well, I know it's a busy week for all of you, so thank you for your time today. Good luck on Wednesday night for the IJC. And good luck on the weekend um, as well for the, for the group uh, ones. Might just invite uh, Winfred uh, back on stage here to, uh, to wish you good luck as well. As that just about wraps things up for us uh, today. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very yeah. much. And Thank very you. good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. That concludes the IJ spe- IJC special. We wish you the very best of luck tomorrow at the Longjean International Jockeys Championship. If you want to get the latest update on the Hong Kong international races, please stay tuned to our HKR daily interview from Wednesday to Friday night on our club's digital platforms.